the imaginary nature exist as mere conceptual creations. It is the objects that are concepts and ideas referred to. For example, since the real tiger in a dream is non-existent, it is merely a figment of the imagination. In other words, the imaginary nature, which refers to the contents of the delusion rather than the delusion itself, exists. Only in the imagination, as the referent of names and concepts. For example, we talk about past events. These events do not exist at all. They are simply names or concepts. For referring to things that are being imagined, but which do not exist, objects external to the mind and senses are of this nature. They do not exist, and yet names and concepts are applied to them. The dependent nature substantially exists, in the sense that it is not just imaginary in the above sense. Thus, the thoughts, concepts, names, and ideas themselves that appear both to the mind and in it do actually occur. For example, the dream tiger occurs and produces an effect, such as fear, in the dreaming mind. However, the dream tiger is only substantial in relation to the real tiger that is imagined to be there. It is not substantial in an absolute sense. From the Shintong point of view, it is not enough just to review the true existence of the imaginary nature. The Shintong uses Matyamaka reasoning. To review the true existence of the dependent nature, as well as the imaginary nature. The perfectly existent nature truly exists because it exists in a non-conceptual way. In the Chitamatra, the perfectly existent nature is said to be mere emptiness, in the sense of freedom from the conceptual process of distinguishing outer perceived objects. As different in substance to the inner perceiving mind. In the Shintong, it is said to be the non-conceptual wisdom mind itself. It is indeed empty of the conceptual process of distinguishing outer perceived objects. As different in substance to the inner perceiving mind, it is also empty of the conceptualizing process that creates the appearance of a divided consciousness, or vijnana. That is, a stream of discrete moments of consciousness. With perceiving 
and perceived aspects. It is completely free from any conceptualizing process, and knows, in a way that is completely foreign to the conceptual mind. It is completely unimaginable, in fact. That is why it can be said to truly exist. For more information on what Jonan Dharma says about the ultimate reality, please visit our website at jonandharma.org. And if you like our video, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell.